I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Hello and welcome to Rama Praise. We're glad to be with you today. This is a special weekend. Yes, honey. This is we celebrate Father's Day this weekend. And, uh, you know, I will have to say you are a wonderful, you, you were a wonderful father as the children were growing up. You're still a wonderful father, but also a grandfather and now a great grandfather. That's hard to believe. Yes, it, it is. You know, well, I, re thank you, I remember uh, when, our, when Craig was born, our firstborn, yes. I, you know, I didn't have to tell anybody who our child was because you that was the time in those times you know that you didn't get to to see the the, the babies birth. Uh, the birth or you didn't get to see they the babies were behind glass the glass mm -hmm. yeah but you would go and visit and anybody around you'd say that's my son that's my son and you did the same thing to the to the daughter <laughs> yes I did and you know um, I know that I had a uh, someone that a roommate that was in the hospital and she said everybody knows who your children are. <laughs> well, I, I was, I, I, I was ready. I wanted to be a father. I, uh, I grew up with a great father. Uh, you know, uh, we, my sis and I had to share our father with the world. Yes. And then his grandchildren and his great grandchildren did, did. Yes. And uh, you know, many people don't realize that when you have a call on your life, a mandate, that continues through the family. Yes. In fact, I'm speaking on the legacy of a father. We, you came in as we were married. We shared, the whole family shared yes. this mandate that God had given my dad. Yes. And we helped him to carry on that. And now our kids are helping us mm -hmm. and we've got grandkids, grandkids that, are that, that are doing the same thing. <laughs> A legacy happens because somebody is willing to do what is necessary for the family and for the call of God upon their life. Yes. You see, if you're going to be a great father, you have to have compassion. Yes. But you also have to know how to rule in a civilized manner yes. and say, no, you can't do that. Yes, you can do that. You know, as I talk here, I could say much more, but let's go where I'm talking about the legacy of a father. You know, uh, this is sort of funny. <laughs> Got it? says, uh, what is fatherhood? Fatherhood's going anywhere you want for Father's Day. Getting to drive there and then even to get in to pay the bill. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting up in the middle of the night to see what the noise was outside when you'd rather stay in bed and hide like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best excuse in the world to buy all those toys you wanted as a child and never got. <laughs> It's catching yourself watching cartoons when no one else is home and then enjoying them. <laughs> it's biting your tongue and remembering to be a good example when someone cuts you off on the highway. It's playing Santa um, at midnight on Christmas Eve and then paying for the privilege at 22% interest for 36 consecutive months. <laughs> 
It's assembling toys that require one screwdriver and a nuclear physics to, physics to assemble. It's praying for and anxiously looking forward to the day when your kids will be out of the house and on their own and then trying to postpone that day as long as possible when it approaches. It's carrying sleeping kids into the house when you're too tired to even carry yourself. Yes, fatherhood is sometimes a thankless job of fixing bikes, breaking up fights, wip wiping up chocolate milk, dental bills, broken arms, skateboards. But today, fathers, we want to say we appreciate you. You know, in First Chronicles, I want to get it here because I want to read it. David is speaking to his son Solomon. And David said to his son Solomon, Be strong and of good courage. Do it. Do not fear nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, my God, will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you until you have finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. This was David giving his son Solomon instructions concerning the building of the temple. Now, in, these, in this verse, as David is giving these final words to his son, we see a couple of things here. We see the heart, his heart for God and his heart for his son. Now, David was a man who is famous, as we know, for following God all the days of his life. Even in the natural, David lived a life that made him outstanding. A shepherd boy that became a musician and a songwriter, a young man that was a giant killer, and then became a successful military leader. A young man that married into the royal family because he killed Goliath. I guess you might say David was an original Robin Hood because as he was fleeing from King Saul that was trying to kill him, he picked up all of these unwanted people uh, and they become his followers and eventually become his mighty men. He was anointed king and provided strong leadership over the land of Israel unto his death. His strongest point was that he was an advocate of his Jehovah God. And he served him all of his life. Actually, he's referred to as a man after God's own heart. And, I mean, stories about David and quotes from about David uh, can be found in a lot of places because people have taken his quotes out of Psalms and made songs out of them, have put them on placards and stuck them on their walls. Centuries of time have now separated us from David. But with all of this distance, I believe there's something that we can learn about being fathers from looking at this man, David. I see in these verses that we read, a man of great conviction. He spoke of his belief in his God. And I think there, if there's ever a time <laughs> that has existed in humanity that we need men of gra a great godly convictions that's passing them on to the next generation. 
We have too many people with no morals or godly character that are being upheld as role models. There's got to be a generation of fathers who step up to the plate and will display godly convictions in the face of all of the corruption that we see around us. We got to realize that our children need to see an example of fathers standing strong with godly convictions. The spiritual well being, I believe, of our nation depends upon our children seeing fathers with godly convictions that's willing to stand strong in the face of every adversity. You know, as you look at it, David was a godly father, but he wasn't perfect. Far from it, but he was called a man after God's own heart. Why? When he made mistakes, he was quick to correct them. Sure, David sinned against God and man, but he was quick to repent and make restitution. When David was confronted by the prophet, he immediately acknowledged this, his wrongdoing. Yeah, his children probably knew about his mistakes, but they also saw the forgiveness of God in his life and his love for God. You know, David's, I believe his convictions became a moral compass for his life. You know, you probably can, Psalms 119 is the lengthiest of all the Psalms, but it probably shows his strong convictions for the power of God more than maybe anything else. It seems like that every verse speaks of David's convictions and beliefs. Now, as we look at this, we can see David was a man of compassion. David's words are filled with compassion for his son. Don't be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not forsake you. David had been very successful. He was a successful musician, soldier, administrator, king. David was a godly father that loved his family, and that outweighed everything. You know, I stand here today... My father was known internationally as the modern day father of faith. An author, radio personality, noted Bible teacher, prophet of God. And I never will forget as he, those last few days and all the people were coming and My daughter and my niece, her cousin, Cookie, came to me and they said, Dad, we've shared pawpaw with the world. Can for these last few days, can we just have him for us? I said, Yeah. And I closed the door and nobody went in but family. I got, some people got upset at me. But as a father, you got to, and an uncle, I had to make a hard decision. Cut off the world for my family? And I did. I took it on the chin. Who cares? Those girls asked for something that I could give them, and I did. 
That's what a father does. I remember him not as the prophet, not as the Bible teacher, preacher, although he was one of the best. What I treasure most I wore those father and son times when we were together. My sophomore year in high school, I traveled with him all over the state of California from the Oregon border to the Mexican border down on the other side of San Diego and from Toronto out in the Death Valley over to Santa Monica and El Monte over on the coast. But every afternoon, he would get a baseball or a softball bat and a bushel basket of softballs, and I would take a glove, and I would, he'd say, you get in center field, and wherever I hit the ball, you go get it. Make every effort to catch it. Those were great times that I remember. But I guess I was fast anyway, and I guess my wife will tell you, I started, I, I played fast pitch softball there in Garland and our team from the church, and I was known as one of the best outfielders in the area. But you know why? Because of my dad. You know, I would say whatever success he had in life, the most success, I think, was he was just my dad. You know, I got three of my five grandsons sitting there. I got my son sitting there, my daughter. You know, I love spending time with, with all of them because when we get together and we do go out to eat together and stuff, I'm not preacher. I'm not pastor. I'm not the head of a worldwide ministry and Ramah's all over the world. I'm just dad and poppy. That's my most cherished moments. It's important, dads, to have those kind of moments with your children as they grow up. I had them with Denise and Craig. I've had them with my grandsons. Compassion for family is very important. As you study David, it seems he gave his children everything they wanted seemed to be. I think each generation does this. I know I've done it. I know my dad. Each generation is a little bit better off financially usually and they try to give more. Maybe sometimes to their disadvantage. But if any of those five boys come to me and ask for something, if I can possibly make it happen, I do. David's children took advantage of him. His own son, Ab Abelson, tried to take the throne away from him. And when David heard that his son, Absalom, was killed, he mourned unmercifully. In fact, he said he wished it would have been him instead of his son. You know, a father's love is not conditioned 
by a child's conduct. It is unconditional. You know, mom gets to carry the child for nine months. But I never will forget Back when my kids were born, you didn't, you didn't go into the delivery room, and some of you sitting here were the same way. But when they rolled Craig first and then Denise, because that's what I had wanted, and that's what I'd prayed for for a long time. And I looked down into those kids' faces. I knew right then that didn't make any difference what happened. I would protect them. I would give my life for them if necessary. That's the compassion that comes into a father's heart when he looks into the face of that child for the first time. I get any of you guys that agree with me. I can see a lot of people shaking heads. Fathers, you know, we have a great responsibility. That is to set an example of how to live naturally and spiritually. How to be successful in both areas. We have a responsibility to teach moral values and display Godly compassion. I've been talking about a legacy of a father. But today I feel like we should, I want to pray for all of you fathers out there. As I pray, you need to say, all right, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me to be yes. the father I should be. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you right now as I'm praying here, I thank you that you're ministering with your Holy Spirit to all of those fathers, even the ones that want to be fathers. Minister to them. Give them lead, guidance of how to be a good father. For those that want to be a father and that they're having trouble conceiving, I thank you that you administer to that family and may they be able to conceive and have children. Father, I thank you that each one of us that are fathers and grandfathers and great-grandfathers will leave a legacy that the family can follow all the days of their life. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. You know, honey, being a father in these times, it's an awesome responsibility, yes. but it, it's very challenging. Right. And I, one thing that I, I think about, it's so important to be the right example. Yes. Um, I know that we don't realize our, our kids are watching. Uh, our grandkids are watching. Yes. You know, I mean, I remember when Cameron was just, oh, he... He loved to walk uh, with you and, and look at you and be with me and yeah. be with you. And so uh, you had, he was you, about four or five years old. Yes, and so he, you know, the example before them. Well, then they will imitate it. Yes, yes. And I, uh, you know, sometimes I would, I would, when we're outside, and I would get something in my throat or something, I would spit. <laughs> Well, he's inside of the, of, the, of the building and he spits and they get on to him for it. And he said, well, Poppy does it. <laughs> That's right. I didn't know if you were going to tell that or not. Oh, yeah. Might as well tell it. <laughs> we're human. <laughs> Everybody's but, human. I know, but it, it is uh, so interesting. And it's like, oh, man, you realize they're watching you when you don't even know that they're watching you. Yes. Yes. Well, our offer this uh, month, I love this offer. Uh, you're... Uh, talking about fathers, four yeah. CDs by your dad knowing God as your father. Yes. 
and uh, two CDs by you, Winning the War of Words. It's so important to say the right words. It's so important to say the right words before our children, before yes. our grandchildren, because they will say what you say. Yes. And then uh, my slimline book called God's Peace, experiencing it all the time. There are scriptures here yes. on peace as and well. And that's, you can have all of that for a gift of $40 or more. Just go to rhema.org and, and order it right now. That's right. You're one going to want to get that. Well, camp meeting <laughs> is coming up just yeah. really soon. July uh, 24 through 29. That's right. And what camp meeting is it, honey? This is our 50th year camp meeting. Yes, that's right. It's going to be a great celebration. Go to rhema.org, all the details there. Actually, you can register online yes. right there. Mm -hmm. It's for the whole family, children's ministry, available for infants through the fifth grade at the night services. Yes. And then there is summer blitz yes. uh, for sixth through twelfth grade, and they that goes all, all you know, week. They all have week an awesome during time. the day and during the night yes. time. It's an awesome time. You don't want to miss it. If you've ever been to camp meeting, yes. this is one you want to come back to, okay? That's right. That's all right. right. You know, I say all the time, thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, and healing, healing to the world. Yes. Well, how is that being done? It's through our word partners. Well, what is a word partner? It's somebody that prays for us on a regular basis, somebody that sends in an offering at least once a month to help support Rhema. Yes. Now, you know, many people think they can't give because they don't have much to give. Hey, listen, if everybody gives what they can, no matter the amount, yes. then it helps us to be able to continue this program, to be able to continue our Bible schools yes. all around, to keep winning more people to God, and so if you would like to be a word partner, just go to rhema.org slash, that forward slash, and WPC, and you can, all the information's yes. there. I want to thank you that are already word partners, but I want to thank you that will become word partners with us and help us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. You need to understand that the word has to be in your mouth if you're going to be a success in life, spiritually, physically, mentally, financially, any other way. The Word of God must be in your mouth and you must be speaking the right words. Winning the War of Words. Two anointed CDs by Kenneth W. Hagan. And God's Peace, a slimline book by Lynette Hagan that helps keep our mind focused on the giver of peace. Plus, Knowing God is Your Father, four CDs by Kenneth E. Hagan. Learn how to get to know your Heavenly Father better. All six CDs and the book can be yours today for a gift of only $40 or more by calling toll-free 888-PRAISE-8 or log on to rhema.org anytime, day or night to order. For Canadian orders, log on to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.